Uh, well, I was invited to speak at the uh, with John Landgraf today, who's, I suppose, John Landgraf, my boss, uh, at the FX uh, network, uh, and you know we do something very challenging on Fargo, which is we have to make uh, a ten-hour movie, basically, um, and uh, we have to do it in very uh, harsh climates and uh, on a very tight schedule. Um, but good enough is not good enough for us, so I wanted to come and talk about how you can, uh, I guess, how you can stretch that dollar, how you can um, be a creative problem solver um, and, uh, you know, produce things that are better than television, on television. If I can do anything to in inspire people, it is to give them a sense that, that um, we're in a creative industry um, and it's not, we're not coal miners. Uh, and there is a fun element to it, and and the idea that you can solve problems creatively, even logistical problems, um, that's exciting to me. And and so I don't want anyone to come to this business feeling like it's a grind. I mean, certainly there's a hard, it's hard enough, but but I think the more fun you have doing it, and the more creativity you can bring to even the the logistical puzzle of it, um, the the better the show will be. Because you're, you're breaking it up, you have multiple directors, obviously you have about five directors per season. Uh, we, sh we block shoot, so we shoot two hours at a time. Uh, and yet each hour seems to be a different movie. Um, so one hour may be a, a big set piece, action, more action oriented episode, and the next hour might be more of a uh, you know, clo locked room drama. Um, and you have to cross board, the, board those two things and the directors have to come in and be able to move from scene to scene and, and, uh, and then a, a whole other team comes in, another director comes in and you have to prep the next, um, the next block. So uh, unlike a TV show which, where you build sets and you're, and you're on your stages, you're in five days and out three days, we're out six out of eight days probably and, and always on the move. Uh, you can do more than you think you can do, and and um, you know obviously you need to hire a caliber of talent, uh, both on the actor front and all the creative positions. Um, we definitely put people through their paces uh, and and have weeded out people who who want a lifestyle job. Uh, that said, I'm a big believer in doing your best work and going home to your family, so um, I like to get things right the first time if I can, and and not really. Um, burn people out. Uh, so it's a balance, you know, and it takes a lot of people. I have two other executive producing partners who are, who are um, on location the entire time working. One of them is on set and the other is, um, is with the prepping director, a uh, very strong line producer and, and, and uh, two strong first ADs. And, and it is, it's a logistical uh, puzzle, but uh, my job is to sort of say, no, we can, we can do that. You don't think we can do that, but we can, we can do that and, and try to inspire people. My job as a showrunner and the, and the you know, creator of the series is really to say, yeah, we're going over the hill. It's going to be great. We'll take the city. There'll be snacks. It's going to be... Um, and, you know, to just to create that sense that, um, you know, my job is, is to try to create an atmosphere for everyone where they feel like they're not rushed. Um, we're here to do our best work um, uh, creatively. I don't want the actors to see the, the timetable we're on. I don't want the directors to feel the pressure any more than they have to. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, and then to cut it together and show it to them and keep inspiring them by showing them what they've done so far. This second year of Fargo was a much bigger year. We had a lot more moving pieces, a lot more locations. Um, there was a scale to it that was um, daunting, certainly. And uh, uh, you know, and then you always, whenever you work with actors of a certain caliber, you have hard outs on talent. It bec it really becomes a logistical puzzle. But um, you know, we had to do a lot of reshoots of the, our first hour. Um, we had some. Um, some issues in, in, the, in the original execution of it and so we, but our schedule doesn't really allow for, uh, we have to get it right the first time, we don't have a lot of room f uh, built in for reshoots and, and, uh, 
additional photography, etc. So there was a logistical element there as well. Plus, um, when we filmed a lot of the sequences originally, we had snow, and then you know it was not a cold winter up there, so we had to truck in a lot of snow. And Revenant was shooting up there at the same time, and they wanted the snow, and there was a whole snow war that went on, and and uh, uh, of course it all melts by the time it gets there anyway. But yeah, so so that was the hardest part was was to kind of um, the hardest part was was to to be able to uh, recreate what we'd done um, on a very limited timetable um, and uh, and keep the show moving forward. If you get to do what you love for a living, you should love doing it. And 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 I find the cre the problem solving process to be fun because it is a cre it's another way to be creative. It's another moment. And and I do have. Um, you know, I have a team mindset, I have an us against the world mindset, and, and uh, um, you know, I mean, when you're producing things um, at a high level on a tight schedule, you wake up in the morning knowing that what you have to do today is impossible. But you just get up and you do it anyway, and, and uh, that's the most surprising thing, I think, for a lot of people is that um, you set out to make a day that feels bigger than you can manage, and 80% of the time you'll probably get it done. Well, I think it's critical to know how to produce something. If, if you want to write for a filmed medium, you should have experience producing things. Uh, I, you know, I had written a couple of pilots because um, I came in as a novelist and then a screenwriter and then into television. And I thought, well, if any of these pilots ever get picked up, I should know how to produce a series. So I went on to a staff. And I was on the staff for two years, and then in the third year I got my own show. So the only producing experience I had going into having my own show was two years of, of experience on, on a show called Bones. Um, but that was a show where, where I was on set the whole time. I was in the editing room. I was with the prepping director. So I really learned how to, how to do the job. Um, if you don't know and you come in, then what happens is they partner you with a producing partner or a sh or a showrunner, and then you find yourself in a fight for whose show it is, you know, because there is that balance between whoever talks to the network and studio is the showrunner, um, and at a certain point we see it all the time, um, y you know, even the creator of a show is replaceable. So, you know, you need to take ownership, um, but you also need to to find a partner um, who doesn't. Um, who's not going to try to turn your show into their show.